And then we have this beautiful meditation by Franklin on befriending our inner world and the meta loving kindness meditations. So these are ways that we, we have many different aspects of ourselves, right? We have the self that wants to um, eat healthy and we have the self that wants to eat that cupcake at two in the morning, right? So we have these different aspects of ourselves. That's Walt Whitman said, I am a multiplicity, right? I contain multitudes <laughs> and we certainly do, right? And bringing these into, into integration, this is the idea of being um, sort of the master of your own kingdom and what kind of master do you want to be? And we're certainly seeing the effects of tyranny on the world scale. So we don't wanna be a tyrannical master within because you know that tyranny expressed out is also tyranny lived inside. That's exactly the psychological structure. So we don't want to be a jerk, right? We want to learn, but we may have developed habits or patterns of <clears throat> being hard on ourselves or mean to ourselves. Our culture thinks that that's what's going to lead us to um, feeling better about or, or behavior change that we can tyrannize ourselves into it. But one of the things we're really seeing is that that doesn't really work, right? To tyrannize ourselves. We're seeing how it works and how effective that is. So let the uh, world stage, world theater environment be a, um, give us insight into the internal environment as a reflection. So how do we want to be a master of our kingdom? Pretty soon we'll talk about stoicism and they talk about you know that we're sort of the um we're the leader of our inner citadel which means city all these this multiplicity that lives within us so how do we want to be with that multiplicity and so we're learning that if we repress things we don't like it explodes back out like a volcano you know about that and so we we've got the befriending these different parts of ourselves this is one way that we can begin it's a tool one of and we're going to learn more tools and it's one of the most valuable tools so we don't you know crush them we we open up and welcome and begin to work with the wolf of hate we'll talk about this some more as we go along because it's a tricky thing to understand right but it's linked to jung's shadow the idea of jung's shadow self all right how do we integrate the shadow in short term like the quick answer and we'll go and we'll have a lecture on this soon on the deep self. Um, the quick answer is that, you know, like, for example, I've shared that I have a temper. Well, there's many aspects of that temper that are good. The energy, the, the willingness to stand up for oneself, the willingness to hold ground, all that fury energy that um, comes up with it. But it's not integrated, right? It's got its own energy. It gets the better of me. I am not integrated with my temper. I lose it. That's not integration of that so-called shadow aspect of itself. Why shadow? Because I don't like it. I don't want it. So I push it away because I don't want it. That's that's the idea of the shadow. We, we turn away from the shadow rather than embrace the shadow. Once we're able to work with the shadow, like the befriending the self, then we're able to integrate it. And then that we, we can have the energy of the temper but we can modulate it. And we're seeing that model too on the world stage. And so all that sort of long-winded thing about what is meant by that idea of integration. When I've integrated my temper, I, that aspect of my shadow self, I will be, when I fully integrated it, I, I, will have the ass, I will have access to the parts of it that I need, the roar, when I need the roar, but it will also be integrated with the other aspects of me. So the roar will be integrated with my... Um, strategic sense, my wisdom self about when to with meditation is a very powerful way to integrate. You can do it at any time you notice yourself pushing part of you away, right? You can just drop into that conversation with the self. Osman, okay, and he's going to lead us on an imaginative guided meditation. So a woman called me, Emily, I'll call her. She was a nurse. She had been a patient of mine some years prior. She'd had breast cancer. Um, she went through the process with, um, as most people do, with a great mixture of emotions and stresses. That's a very stressful situation. She was one of those people who went through 
for cancer, eventually looking at it as a wake up call. Not everybody does, and I'm not saying that it is, but that was her response to it, that, that lots of things in her, in her life were out of balance and this was a wake up call and she was going to respond to it in that way, not only by doing the surgery and the radiation and she didn't do chemotherapy, but not only doing the conventional medical things, but by looking at her whole life, her diet, her nutrition, her relationships, her work, everything. And she got immersed in it and did very well through her treatment and came through her treatment, a genuinely changed person as people who do that, this will. They, they don't just come out as survivors of treatment. They come out as changed people, people who have learned something. And she had been doing great for a while. This was about four years afterwards. And I get a call from her and uh, I get on the phone with her and she's sobbing uncontrollably and can barely even talk. And finally, you know, I got the, I figured out between her sobs, she said, She's at her oncologist's office. She's getting her four-year checkup, and she's just been told she has a recurrence. And she's completely devastated. She's back even worse than she was when she first got diagnosed, maybe because she had sort of done everything right, you know, and was kind of sailing along and in her nice new life. And here she gets a blow that she's got a recurrence. That's not, that's a difficult thing to deal with. So she's sobbing and I said, why don't you come over at the end of the day? And she came over and she's still sobbing. She's bent over, sobbing so hard that, that she can barely speak. And the only thing she can say that I can hear is, I, can't, I just don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it again. I just can't do this again. I can't go through it again. By the time she said that about 10 times, I finally got it. And, um, and I said, Emily, and this is the key question in this technique of evocative imagery, which is, what do you feel you're missing that would allow you to do this? What do you need more of in order to do this? And she took a minute or so and she said, I just don't know if I have the strength or the courage to do this again. So I said, would you be willing to do some imagery? Because she had done a lot of it when she was first diagnosed and she was, of course, willing to do it. And I introduced her to this technique and it was, it's simply this. I, I said, she did a little breathing. I said, let yourself go back in time in your memory to some time in your life when you felt you had what you need now. Go back to some time when you felt that you had the courage and strength. Then after a while, she added clarity. She said courage, strength, and clarity was what she needed. So go back in your life to some time when you felt that you had the strength and courage and clarity that you're looking for now. And just let your mind go back and see what comes to mind. And what came to mind for her was a time about 20, 25 years beforehand when her mother had been diagnosed with breast cancer. And Emily was a young a nurse just out of school. And she said, um, I'm in my mother's living room. My mother is sobbing and bereft and overwhelmed like I feel now. And what you do is you go back and you, I asked her to talk about everything in, current, in present tense. I said, Talk about it as if you're there again. Where are you? I'm in my mother's living room. What do you see? I see the sofa. I see the doilies. I see the screens on the windows. I see the afternoon sun coming in the window. What do you hear? I hear my mother sobbing, crying, hysterical. I hear my sister in the other room on the phone to my aunt. She's crying and screaming and hysterical. I say, what do you feel in yourself? She says, well, I'm holding the center. There's nobody else. I'm strangely calm and clear. And I'm the one who's holding the center so that we can do what needs to be done. Okay. So then I said, now, what does that, so what does that feel like in your body? Where do you feel that in your body? And she kind of says, I, I feel it kind of mostly here in my heart. And so now notice what it feels like in your heart and notice what it feels like in your body. If you really let yourself feel that clarity and calm, the, the holding the center experience that you have now. And she's got her eyes closed. She kind of sits up, her posture changes. I say, and notice what does it feel like in your face to feel that quality of clarity and calmness, courage. And her face gets very composed. And and then we go through a, a process that you can do in your imagination. So now if you like, let yourself just let that feeling get larger and stronger and expand and 
flow through your body. And I wonder if you like, imagine that it's flowing down your arms, down to the tips of your fingers and your palms. And we did the same with her legs down to the bottom of her feet. And we go through some imagery suggestions like, you know, imagine that that feeling of calmness and clarity and courage is reaching every cell of your body from the deepest cells of your bone marrow out through all of your muscles and all of your contective tissue and your out to the outermost cells of your skin. And every part of you is full of clarity and courage and calmness. By now she's very still and calm and quiet. And then we say, now, if you like, imagine you have a control like you have on a radio and you can turn this up as large as you imagine that you're overflowing with these clarity and courage and calmness. We repeat the names of the qualities a lot while you're doing this. And you're filling the space around you for two feet in every direction. And then if you like, turn it up so you're filling a bigger space and a big, you get the idea. You can fill the whole room with it or the whole world with it. And then adjust it to what feels comfortable for you. And then she comes back and it takes about 10, 15 minutes to do that. She comes back, she's composed, she's clear. She says, you know, I can do this. I do have what I, what I need. I just couldn't get to it. And that's very often true that when we're really stressed and really scared and really emotionally upset, we sometimes can't access our strengths and the imagery will allow us to shift and access it. So she still had a recurrence. She still had things to deal with, but now she's got a tool where she can connect with these, with this clarity and courage and calmness, which will help her go through them. And she would lose it from time to time. But she would go back to this method and be able to reaccess that feeling. And when I saw her, I saw I saw her once a week for the next few weeks. But by sometime in the third week, she said to me, "She said, you know, this evocative imagery is it's really like emotional bodybuilding, isn't it?" I said, "I never thought of it that way, but it's really true." Because she says, "The more I do that, the more I feel." the clarity and the calmness and the courage. And I, I actually feel it in myself. It's not, and what's neat about the imagery is that it gives you the experience. It's not just patting someone on the back and saying, oh no, you're, you can do this, which is helpful. But when people actually experience it, as I hope you'll have a chance to do it, it's a whole different thing. Then you actually know that you have that thing inside you. Okay. okay. Television show, advertisements, it's all guided imagery. Okay. 99.6% of your daily life is guided imagery, believe me, once you start to, okay. But we're going to do therapeutic guided imagery, okay. Um, and what I want to invite you to do is think about a situation that's stressful for you, if you have one. And if not, maybe the person next to you has more than one and they would loan it to you. <laughs> But if you have a stressful situation going on or something happened recently that was very stressful that um, you had difficulty dealing with, especially a stressful situation that you may not be able to do anything about and that you're having trouble accepting or coming to terms within yourself, just think about that situation and think about what you would, a quality or a couple of qualities that you would like to have more of as you deal with that situation. So this could be patience, it could be humor, it could be kindness or compassion, it could be assertiveness, it could be courage, it could be faith, it could be something else. But think of a quality or two that you feel like if I had more whatever, I could deal with this more easily. And give the quality a name, and it can be up to, it's a one to three qualities that you would just like to feel more of. If you don't have an ongoing stressful situation, great, I'm glad to hear that. And just think of a quality that you would like to experience more vividly for a few minutes now. So it could be happiness, it could be joy, it could be whatever. And by the way, you can change that as you go inside. If, if something comes to mind, you can change the quality. And now, if you're comfortable with it, go ahead and close your eyes. And you can, it's just easier to do imagery with your eyes closed, but you can open them at any time and look around. 
And at any time, if you're uncomfortable with anything, just open your eyes and look around the room and bring yourself out of your inner world. But if you're comfortable going to your inner world, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath, and just kind of let your out breath be a letting go kind of a breath. And just do that a couple more times, one at a time. You breathe in, imagine that you're breathing in some fresh energy and the oxygen flowing through your body. And as you let the breath out, invite any tension or distraction or discomfort to flow out with the breath. And just invite your body to soften and open. And feel free to shift and be more comfortable at any time. And as you breathe and let yourself relax, let your mind get relatively quiet. And just think about those that quality or qualities you'd like to experience more of. And let yourself go back in your mind. Just ask your unconscious mind to take you back to some time in your life when you experienced yourself having those qualities in you. Or if you never experienced those qualities when you witnessed somebody expressing those qualities. But just let yourself think of a time in your life when you had those qualities, you experienced having experienced that quality or qualities in you. And then imagine that you're there again now, as best you can. And look around as if you're really there and notice a few things that you see or imagine seeing. And notice the colors and the shapes and the objects and the people or whatever's there, notice what you see as you look around in your inner world. As you're beginning to feel this quality or quality in yourself. And notice what you hear in that place. And notice that you can hear my voice and things from the room at the same time, but in your inner world, Notice what you're hearing as you're in that place, experiencing yourself having that quality or qualities. And notice what the air or atmosphere is like, if there's an odor or an aroma or a fragrance or a particular quality of the air in that place where you are. And notice what time of day it seems to be, day or night. And then start to notice in your body, kind of gently scan your body with your awareness and notice where you feel this quality or qualities most strongly in your body. Kind of scan up and down like a radar beam, sonar beam. And notice if you feel this quality or qualities more strongly in one area of your body or another. It seems to center somewhere. Your chest or your abdomen or your pelvis, legs or your head, hands or arms, or maybe it's all over. And as you start to notice what it feels like to feel this quality or these qualities in yourself, notice what it feels like in your body. Let the feelings get a little bit stronger so you can really feel the, the particular quality or qualities and let it grow a little stronger if you're comfortable with it. And notice what it feels like in your body. And notice what your posture wants to be like as you're feeling this quality or qualities. And notice what your face feels like and what the expression on your face wants to be as you feel this quality or qualities in your face.
And if you're comfortable with it, let the strength of the qualities grow larger and stronger. You can imagine you have some kind of a volume control like you do on a radio or television. You can turn it up or down. And imagine that you just turn it up so that it begins to fill the whole space of your body. And as if that quality or qualities could be radiated and filled all the way down your legs to the bottoms of your feet, all the way down your arms to the palms of your hands, throughout your hips and back and pelvis, abdomen, chest, head and neck. And imagine that that quality, it's as if it could be radiated out so that it's touching every cell in your body. From the deepest cells in your bone marrow, to your bones, your ligaments, connective tissues, organs, layer under your skin, all the way out to the very outermost skin cells, as if every cell of your body was touched and filled with this particular quality or qualities. And if that's a pleasant experience, if that's a good experience for you, go ahead and turn it up even higher, as if that those qualities could overflow your body and fill the space around your body for a foot in every direction. And if you want to, you could just be soaking it up like a sponge. And if you want to, you can turn it up so you're filling the space for three feet in every direction. Or 10 feet in every direction. Just imagine that there's an abundant source of this quality or qualities, wherever it comes from. You could fill the room with it if you wanted to. You could fill the world with it if you wanted to. But then adjust it to whatever is most comfortable for you. And whatever is most comfortable for you is perfectly all right. It's like listening to music all by yourself. Whatever is most comfortable and pleasing to you however big or small, however strong or subtle you'd like this quality to be, just adjust it so that it's most comfortable for you right now and let that be all right. And now as you're experiencing yourself in touch with that quality or qualities, look at this stressful situation again that you thought about from that perspective. And just notice if it seems any different to you in any way, or if your relationship to it seems different in any way, it may or may not, just notice. Notice what it would be like if you were dealing with that situation while being in touch with this quality or qualities in yourself. Notice if anything seems to be different or go differently. Notice if anybody, including yourself, seems to react or respond differently. And just imagine that you have as much of what you need Just imagine you have as much of what you need. And just see if it looks or feels or seems the same or different in any way.
if there's anything you would do differently about it. Or not. If you would feel any differently about it. Or not. Just take a few moments with that. And then when you're ready, just start to gently become aware of the room we're in together. And let go of the images. And start to notice what you hear or experience in the room, here and now. And as your attention comes back to the outside world, bring back with you anything that you've learned, anything that seems important or interesting to you. Or any questions you have about this experience. And I'm going to give you just a few minutes to come all the way back and come back feeling more relaxed and refreshed and awake than you were before. Take a few minutes to write down anything you'd like to remember or that seemed important or interesting or any questions you have about this experience for later. <laughs> 